the administration of the Unemployment Insurance Fund is shocking. That's according to Labour lawyer Michael Bechreim. Now, he says hundreds of individuals are still waiting for their UIF claims to be processed, some of which stretch all the way back to the COVID-19 period. He joins us this afternoon on this all the way from Cape Town. Michael, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. I suppose the big question is what is causing these, this huge backlog uh, that we are talking about this afternoon? Why is it that people are waiting almost uh, three years, if you will, for UIF payments? Thank you. Thanks for having me on air. Yes, I, I've been working with this now for, for years, for over 10 years. Uh, but obviously COVID-19 and the TERS payment, if you recall, the payments that government had promised to make to the people uh, who couldn't work during the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, that payment obviously put a lot of pressure on the UIF. Um, they couldn't handle it. At the time, I had begged the minister to try and give this to the South African Revenue Service to handle because they actually collect the um, UIF monies. The employers pay it in um, on behalf of the employees and themselves to the SARS commissioner. And I was begging the minister at the time to do it because there were thousands of people that were contacting everyone to see if they could get at least an answer. Well, I must tell you, the UIF for years, for over 15 years now, has been actually quite shocking anyway. They, they, they can't handle the pressure. The staff don't seem to be trained. Uh, the long queues, the no one answers telephones, no one answers emails. Uh, it, it, it's a nightmare, and I think any one of your listeners will be able to tell you that. Of course, it got so much worse during COVID-19 um, that I was getting emails um, from people um, by the dozen every day. So we've now calculated that I have already written to the commissioner since then uh, approximately 14,000 emails to the minister. There's 14,000 different people I've written to the minister and to the UIF commissioner uh, about this. Um, the commissioner himself, um, at a certain stage, got suspended, and then we had to get an um, uh, acting commissioner. It seemed to get a little bit better, but when the commissioner came back, the commissioner at least responds. But you must understand, the 14,000 people that I'd written to the commissioner about uh, were a drop in the ocean. I just think the administration is completely useless. Um, it's not that the UIF hasn't got the money. Uh, you might have read about the UIF was about to lend 5 billion rand through the PIC into a company that hadn't done any work yet. So there's lots of money there in the UIF. The money does not belong to the government. The money does not belong to a political party or to anyone else. It belongs to the employees of South Africa. And they just somehow struggle. Uh, it's an absolute struggle to get the money out. I, I, you know, if you look at the domestic workers of South Africa, they can now actually register with the UIF and even the registration process has become almost impossible. So it's taken the government 25 years to register domestic workers. They eventually then say domestic workers can join the UIF and uh, can claim whatever they want. Um, but the registration process is impossible. I don't think there's any staff that are fit for purpose. Um, and it's horrible to say this because uh, there are people obviously at the top. The commissioner is desperately trying to get this right. Uh, but I'm not sure how it's going to be happening. I, I just... Uh, you know, I, I've got no hair left. Yeah, I mean, it's very, a very worrying um, scenario that you've just pointed out in that it's not that there's an issue of there being no money. It's incompetence, you're saying, of the workforce there, but a whole bunch of other issues. And so one would wonder about accounting, um, accountability here and, and the role that Parliament would have to play here in making sure that something is done. Because ultimately, Michael, the Commissioner cannot not only deal with the 14,000 people you mentioned, but like you say, it's a drop in the ocean compared to the uh, thousands of others that are waiting not only to register but to receive payment. Yeah, and they're desperate people. The money in the UIF, like I said, and I must reiterate that, it belongs to the employees of South Africa. It doesn't belong to government. They are merely custodians for that money. 
And yet I get people, I, I had another lady yesterday crying on the phone saying she's lost everything. She's lost her house, her motor vehicle. Uh, she can't even look after herself anymore. And she's entitled to get at least 12 months of UIF. She's been waiting for a year. And her, I went through the application. The application itself is perfect. No problem. Now, when I speak to one person, that one person I reckon is representative of hundreds, of thousands. And yet it just somehow is not given. These are the people that have worked hard, have put away a little bit of money into the UIF, their own money. The employers put in money on their behalf. It doesn't belong to the employer. It belongs to the employee. It's paid to the employee on their behalf into the UIF. The UIF then invests it into the PIC. Um, the PIC, for some reason, either seems to be up the creek as well because they are, allow the, the UIF to invest in non-entities. You will recall there was a UIF had invested in two companies before COVID-19. That the, both companies went bankrupt, and that was millions down the drain. We've now had a, a disaster where the minister was warned in December 22 that the UAF was about to invest 5 billion rand into a company that was not active, that had done nothing. And when the minister was asked, he said, well, he'll look into it. Well, it's now taken nine months. We're in, we in September, nine months to get an investigation going and to show that there are people who are culpable. It's negligence. Now, there's gross negligence going on there. And this is money that belongs to people who are now desperate, people who have got no more jobs. They've been retrenched. They've been dismissed. They're going on maternity leave. I mean, take the ladies who go on maternity leave. I dare anyone to come forward and tell me that they got their money before they actually had the baby. I mean, people are waiting a year after the baby's now had its first birthday and they still haven't got their money. The whole thing is ridiculous. We need a shake-up. We need people who are fit for purpose, and we need consequence management. And that's the only way we're going to do it, is when they start looking at people and giving people warnings and saying, do your work, answer, answer the emails, answer telephones. You try and go and stand in a queue outside the UAF, you'll get varicose veins before anyone speaks to you. It's it's this is not this is just not fair. These are the poorest of the poor and vulnerable people. It's their money. They just can't get it out. Mm, I mean, obviously, Michael, if you're having um, a minister or management at the very uh, executive level failing to uh, give feedback on important issues for about nine months now, the clearing up of the workforce and the shaking up of the UIF is obviously not going to be something that's going to be done as a matter of urgency. But in the meantime, in the immediate term, for the pregnant woman, for those who are unemployed and the like, is there something in the short term that can be done to offer some kind of reprieve or do you just continue on the fight? Well, unfortunately, there's nothing. We don't have the power to go in and fire people. We don't have the power to go in and bully people. That's not going to happen. The only thing is there is hope. There is money there. We've stopped the 5 billion rand moving out of the UIF. They are solvent. There was a lot of rumors going around that they're insolvent. Uh, they're absolutely solvent. They've got the money. They even had the 5 billion to waste. So the money's there. You have to keep pushing. Um, people do write to me, and I do write to the commissioner. The commissioner normally gets back within 24 hours, so I'm going to take my hat off and commend the commissioner for that. But like I said, um, I, I'm just one person. The commissioner is mm. just one person. There is an entire fraught group of people working underneath. It might not even be their fault. They might have been appointed um, as cadre de deployment, for instance, and they haven't got the training then it's not the individual's fault either sitting there in the office. Uh, if you send Michael Bagram to go work in the UIF office, I'd be useless. Um, so you've got to be careful who you appoint. But we, now we've got a whole administration sitting at the UIF that somehow is not interested in helping the public at all. There is no service delivery. And the sooner the Minister of Employment and Labor realizes it, the better. Um, I'm not so sure how long he's got there to sit, but in the next few months, hopefully, they do jack themselves up. I have said that time and time again, almost on a weekly basis, at the Portfolio Committee of Employment and Labor. 
And the minister sits in those portfolio committee meetings. He's absolutely aware. It's not like there's this coming as a shock to him. He can't say there's any shock. He's aware in that for the last 10 years, he's been warned that his staff are not functional. And it's very difficult to explain to the person who's sitting at home who can't put any food on the table for their children, never mind themselves. Yeah, no, it's, it's, so it's, it is a disaster. No, it is a disaster indeed, and hopefully we will get the minister on uh, in the coming days uh, to um, give his side of the story and give us an explanation of what exactly is going on within those walls at the UIF. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, for joining us uh, this afternoon. Uh, Michael Graham joining us, uh, talking about a very worrying uh, trend within the UIF years uh, that people are sitting uh, waiting to get uh, payments. Uh, some, as you've just heard, like domestic workers, are not even able to register even though they are now allowed to do so as domestic workers.